November 1st, 426 AM, weekly vlog. I am a little less into it today. I'm about to put the skates on and I'll run you through the daily happenings of how we run our Lego store. Today was a frozen food day. We all, two of us brought frozen food in. Now the freezer's full, so now I gotta most likely donate a bunch of stuff to the food pantry down the street because now we have too much food and we have a bunch of canned food as well that we've been stockpiling that will be donated to a food drive for my one of my kids at school. Yeah, I'm not 100% here. I feel like I'm a little mentally distracted this morning. I don't know why. Just, I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe I'm just a little burned. A little worn out. I need to take a day off or something. But I'm here because you have to be here. When you own the place, you have to... You do have to do it here regardless. You don't get really a, a choice to just walk away completely. But maybe we can take a breather. What's that happening this morning? This morning we have 39 orders to pick, 541 lots, 2,876 parts. We should be able to accomplish that today. So the, the way that I add that is I just go into BrickLink inventory and I increase the quantity by one. And then I just simply put it in the drop location of where it goes. Right there. In the store. I also have a new project that I started last, uh, must have been Friday maybe, where I'm doing plates. So base plates are going here, and then 16 by 16 plates are going in here all coming from this tub and then tubs like this we have maybe i don't know 10 of them maybe 10 ish we also just recently started doing active ebay sales and what we're doing on ebay is we're doing bulk so we i've made an ebay station boxes bulk supplies so we give them a pound per their order. They can order as many as they want and it's by the pound. Then we got uh, mini figs right here. We just throw in like a, a mini fig or the parts, all the parts to make a complete mini fig, you know, head, hat or accessory, uh, headgear rather, torso and legs and all the boxes there. And we actually have some to process today. And I also believe one of the other listings I have is tires and it sold one quantity half pound tire. So we're trying to create a better reputation for us on eBay because we have enough product, we need, we need to find a way to push through it. All right, doing eBay. You gotta take a pound of bulk, put it in a bag, pull out non-Lego. All right, this is gonna be a little loud on the Lego noise, but we got a pour cup. I got my scale, and I'm gonna fill these up. And I got my scale, I'm gonna weigh 15, or 16 ounces. Oh, non-Lego. Oh, come in. Let me pull off two pieces here. Still a little bit too much. Another tire. One less. All right. So now I'm going to scan it for the non Legos. And then I probably have to add a couple more pieces to make sure, depending on how many non Legos I pull out. And sometimes if I do find a piece that I know is really good and valuable. I will pull it. And inevitably, we always
always finds a few non-Legos. I need to get another little tub here for the non-Lego. So it's not just floating around everywhere. And little pieces of trash. Don't want to ship those. Stuff that's really excessively worn that I wouldn't like to build with, I'm removing as well. Is that Lego? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a Lego. Our next goal, and my next goal, is to uh, build these boxes ahead of time. So that when this comes up, I don't have to do this. When the order comes in, just do it ahead of time. That is not Lego. All right. That feels pretty good. Scale just zeroed out. I got to do this again. Oh, that's the best. I still haven't one hundred percent gotten comfortable with how to do this yet. I and mean, we're getting the product to the customers just fine, but. The right way to do this, I'm not sure yet. Right, let's put this on here. I'm feeling I'm going to add something when we open this up. Okay. Now, mini piece. I'm not focusing on building a uh, an actual complete official minifig, but I'm just grabbing minifig pieces for our customers. So they, when they open these up, they can be like, woohoo! That's what I'm hoping they'll do. All right, number one's done. On to number two, I'm gonna keep moving. All right, we did have one customer order half a pound of tires, bulk tires. Yes. So we actually got something different this time. I have five listings for eBay, some torsos, some heads, uh, I think legs, bulk, and tires. So let's get eight ounces of tires, miscellaneous bulk tires. And we got a ton of them here. Just gotta find the right bag to pull from. Here's a good one. I like this one right here. Okay, yeah. I definitely can get tires from here. I think I'm gonna take the time to like actually make some matching tires for them. Are they really gonna be rolling? Yeah, that's right. They'll be rolling in tires. Alright, let's figure this out. They might get tired. Yeah, I think they might get tired. All right, so here's my scale. How do I ensure that I find some of the same ones, right? Or try to, at least. I feel like that would be just absolutely annoying if I bought a bunch of tires and not even two of them were the same kind. I, I can't do this on the table here. I need something to pour this into. 
because I haven't really dropped it on the ground. Let me. Right, here's the two that I've done. I just leave them in here. The next time somebody comes in with an order for tires, make it easier on ourselves. All right, so these two, these are two of the same. There's two. And there's another two. And here's two of the same. All right, so here's four of the same. Perfect. Give them another set of something here. Right. Ooh, ooh, here's something. This is quick. All right, so there's four of those. And I need, that's it. All right, so I, there's two s sets of four, and then two sets of two, and the rest of it, I'm just gonna get to the eight ounces any way I can. Right now we're at, I don't even know what eight ounces of tires looks like, but right now we're only at just, just, uh, just under three. So let me just grab a handful here. Is that, is that Lego? I don't think that's Lego, but I, I don't know. I've never seen this one before. Discover it later. Six point nine nine. This is gonna give us that, I think. Eight. Exactly eight. We're done. All right, half pound of tires. Throw the business card in there. stickers on there. We always put these stickers on the packages. I have big stickers and little stickers now. Maybe I can pick, put the sticker on the back of it. Okay. Half pound tires. Uh, now two one pounders. We have boxes. Now, but I'm gonna use this first recycled Amazon box for this one. A little time lapse of it.
All right, so torn all the labels apart. Steve is adding the tracking information from ship station to each and every order. So that's a matter of copying the tracking number from ship station over to Brick Freedom uh, after you find the, the customer name. I am copying to our business card or our shipment card the order number or order numbers in this case this customer had two orders and then that way when they get their order they get a bag with the card in there and then they can throw everything else away the packaging and the label and they can pile their orders up because in my mind, I visualized the customer having more than one order come in uh, of Lego from multiple stores. And if we give them all their Lego in a single bag with this card on it, and it's got the order number on it, then they can get rid of all the packaging and then they can set aside and do like an unboxing of all their orders that day. And then later on go in and verify uh, their stuff, verify all the parts, make sure that we got it right. That's kind of how I picture it. So we try and create a scenario from our orders that allows them to do that and not have to save the packaging. And then we've also been sh printing a shipping manifest. So there's the shipping manifest that has all the day's orders on it. And then we've been signaturing next to the individual if we verify that order so we know v later if we that customer says i'm missing a part then we know who verified it maybe we can help them improve their process all right so my goal is to try and improve the shipping manifest so i'm finding i'm gonna not let you see all that video but i'm in ship station you go to shipments and ship station lacks in one area when you you can see columns and orders but you can't see the same columns and shipments in orders you can see the notes that we've made like the custom field notes but you can't find that anywhere in the details on we've looked and looked and looked and looked I feel like a call to them would be valuable today because you can you can see the custom field number ones two and three from the order page but you go to shipments and you don't get the same columns it's not written very well in my opinion by doing it that way. All right, so I want 1011, batch number 101139. Oh, All right, so now I've got my batch. And if I say shipping custom forms, what is custom forms? No, not customs. Cu not custom form, customs forms. I don't want that. Shipping manifest. All right, so here's what the shipping manifest looks like. Now, if I... I don't want to zoom in on that, no. We're trying to figure out, because it's so tiny on this, on this clip, on, it's just the way it's printing is... It seems like it's the best way, but it's just tiny. Fit to page. Rotate counterclockwise. No. It doesn't seem like there's much customization available here. All right, so there's the shipping manifest Order summary is another one you can pick, but that, that one there we tried and it was too 
it takes up too much space. And then if you try and print it on multiple pages, that doesn't work. If we could increase the font size on the shipping manifest or maybe zoom in somehow. If we could just customize the way that this looks. Another deficiency inside ShipStation, you can't. Maybe there is a way, document options. Shipping manifest, document options, list items for each I don't want to list the items. That's the only thing you can customize. Pick list. What is that? No, we don't have our inventory loaded into ShipStation. Order summary. Document options on the order summary. That one, maybe I can do this. No product images, no product SKUs, hide SKUs items. And that's not gonna help me either. End of day form. What is that? Where do I find end of day form? So let's go to shipments. Where is end of day? Here, there's a button here called end of day. End of day, open shipments, close shipments. Well, where's my print button? I can close all these shipments. Where's my button? No, I don't see a print button. It says close selected, but I don't want to close them. I want to print everything. Packing slips? What is pack? Yeah, packing slip doesn't work either. I think I'm going to have to contact ShipStation and talk to them about the shipping manifest, lack of options, and then I can also comment to them that we can't organize by custom field on shipments. And the, I would like to see these changes made. Well, all right, so the only way I'm gonna be able to do this is the same way we've been doing it, because I can't see any way to improve. 101, 139 from today, right? All right, so what I ended up doing was saving it as a PDF and then printing it at 200% zoomed in. So you, you miss some fields, which we don't use anyways. Um, but in this way, I think it'll be bigger. The signature will be not trying to make a tiny little signature. Yeah, it made it much larger. And the name is there and easily readable. All right, that's how we're going to do it for now until I can get an improvement from ship station. But this looks like it'll work. I have organized the cart a little bit better, put some stickers on there, made a package for tires, minifig, parts we want to keep, troll parts. Actually, I forgot to label troll parts. Let's do that really quick. And I don't like the way that that worked out. Let's see if I can improve it. I gotta get my pen.
Good enough. It'll work. The project I've been working on is, I think I talked about this a little bit earlier, but you're gonna get it again. 16 by 16s, all kinds of base plates sorted from here. I'm gonna work on it a little bit this morning. Uh, a couple of them over here have been washed. And so we went into some issues today. I only got a few more minutes left here, but I am gonna work on this for a little bit now. So you can watch me do that. As you watch me do everything, it's exciting. Big boat. No matter what the base plate is, it's going to there. All these other size plates. Oh wow, big ones. Big ones in there. My goal is to get all the plates added for today. Because I have a feeling I'll be working on plates until forever. It'll never end. Say hi to the camera, Grant. the rest of this. So d still developing the process for this, but I enjoyed what happened here. I think I'm gonna leave them out of the, the box down here that's empty. We'll leave that empty and we'll use that for something else. 
but anything that's been one level processed is gonna stay in the tub. So I'm gonna put the tub over there, I'm gonna bring another box in here and see how much I can get done in 20 minutes before I have to leave. Uh, so let's do that. Let's get this, I'm gonna put it on time-lapse again, because that seems to work. Right, so I found this unusual base plate, and there's one set it came with. There's the other, another one. Yeah, this is an old. You know, a lot of people collect those. Well, I hope so. I hope they collect all Lego. Well, I mean, I'm talking about the old sets. Oh, the old sets. Yeah, there's a few people who really. 1978. All right, so I'm wrapping up. I was able to accomplish this pile of 16 by 16s these base plates over here found two 48 by 48s and one unusual size from 1978 which was a 24 by 40 blue plate in really good condition absolutely gorgeous condition went over there and gave it a good scrub down um, amazing that this lego plate from 1978 which would be close to 40 three years old, 42 years old, is in as amazing shape. It looks like it's brand new. Um, it's beautiful shape, no, nothing issues whatsoever. That's one of the nice things about running a Lego store, I will say. If you're looking for a store to run, uh, you could do a lot of different things. You could do books, you could do restaurants, whatever. But Lego doesn't expire, it doesn't decay. You know, it, they go bad people are all rough on them but we run into a lot of stuff like that like looking brand new 1978 base plate and what we do is process it and get it back into the system so somebody's been sitting on that for a long time 40 plus years and now we can get it to an individual who really wants to enjoy it and build it and that's what we really love doing here the most is getting product out to customers uh, there's some picking going on today, so I hope that you enjoyed today's vlog. This is Chris from the Great Break Lab checking out.